what's going on for you? How could I help? Uh, so Steve, uh, I think I told you this the last time we talked. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be taking the July LSAT. And I think I have like about four months before that, like give or take a like, few days. Uh, and I'm also going to be trying to take three LSATs in total by the end of the year, if necessary. Uh, so I'm just giving myself some time to prepare for the LSAT. Uh, I've done a little bit of training for the LSAT before, I would say about three to four months before this. But I feel like the training I've been doing is very like broad and like aimless. And uh, although I've seen an improvement in my score, I feel like uh, my logic games, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at with, but my logical reasoning, however, I feel very, uh, like, very iffy because certain questions, even though they're super hard, I can get them right. But some of the easier questions, I sometimes make a mistake on. It's very, like, non consistent, right? Inconsistent with my, like, uh, the way I'm, the scores I'm getting. Um, so, yeah, so I just wanted to know if there's a particular way that I can approach learning the logical reasoning games that can help me get to a score within the next four to six months. Sure, absolutely. So are you, it sounds like you're looking for a general framework for studying for the LSAT overall. Is that correct? Uh, yes, but also uh, logical reasoning in particular. Uh, I want to put more emphasis on logical reasoning because I've, I've definitely been getting a minus one to a minus zero in logic games with timing. But logical reasoning, I'm going over the time limit. I'm also like, uh, I'm getting, I'm falling for a lot of traps. So, uh, when, when, when there's a time limit on timer on, I start reading through the options really fast and any option that resembles what could be an answer I pick and move on. And that, that leads me to pick a lot of traps. Um, and I just want to know if there's a way to study particularly for the logical reasoning exams. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And so it sounds like maybe the review process for logical reasoning would be useful for you. What does your review process look like right now? I'm not going to be honest. I, I, I don't do this for every single question I get it right. But for every question I get it wrong, I look at it and I see why I made a mistake. So I would just read their uh, prompts and try writing down certain notes right next to the questions. Um, yeah. Okay, so explanations are good but you don't want to use them as a crutch. The first step right. after you get something wrong or you have difficulty with something is to engage in your own review process, analyzing your own thoughts. Right. So for okay. logical reasoning, the framework I recommend for this is called the Socratic review method. And the Socratic review method is a way to really get to the root of where your misunderstanding stemmed from. Was it in the Got stimulus? It. Was it in the question stem? Or was it in the answer choices? If it was in the stimulus, you want to figure out what it was about the method of reasoning that mm -hmm. made it more difficult for you. Maybe they buried the conclusion in the middle. Maybe they require right. you to take the contrapositive. Maybe they right. used annoying words like unless, except, until, or without. Or right, maybe it's right. just on a topic that pre-law students typically don't like, like science. Right. Okay. Uh, so when it, so you were you talking about understanding me understanding my own thought process and why I made a mistake in certain questions, right? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, so while, while preparing for logical reasoning or the LSAT as a whole, um, you need to, how would you recommend me splitting my time between practices and, uh, you know, like learning concepts? It's all valuable. I mean, there's a place for mm -hmm. all of it. There's theory and there's application. Right. And then there's review after the application. And there's more on the Socratic review method I could get into later if you like about question stems and answer right. choices. But yeah. you build the foundation first and uh -huh. then you move on to practice to solidify it. Then you work right. on pacing and endurance. Right. So I'm in college right now. I'm taking about 18 credit hours uh, of classes. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would like to take at least one test a week like one practice test a week, would you recommend taking the tests or like taking sections at this point? I would suggest that you take, do, I think doing one exam a week is good to stay right. fresh on it, but only after you feel like you've built a strong foundation. Right. Okay. Using the Socratic method, can that help me get my timing up as well? Like, um, because me understanding what I do wrong, would that help me, um, 
you know, understand like how to approach the question in the most efficient way possible. Yeah, it will help indirectly because if it helps you better understand the questions, then right. next time you encounter a similar one, you'll be able to solve mm -hmm. it more efficiently because you will have already understood that type of method of reasoning and you'll be better able to navigate the tricks that LSAC throws at you. Got it, got it. So I have another question, right? Uh, so when you're reading uh, logical reasoning, like a prompt, would you read the stimulus first or question first? Because you told me that you read the question first and I've only been reading the stimulus first then moving on to the question then moving on to my answer choices. And if I don't understand, if, I, if I'm not satisfied with any of my answer choices, then I go back to the stimulus um, to see if I can get like more information than to like to match a possible answer choice. How would you recommend I go about that process? Because I've heard a lot of like, you know, I've read a lot of things online that recommend like a lot of different things, but how would you go about it? Well, I prefer questions them first. Others prefer stimulus first. Ultimately, it's not really that big a deal. And since you're right. aiming to take the LSAT in the summer, you've got plenty of time to try out both styles, both approaches, right. and see what works better for you. Personally, Perfect. I like question stem first because it shows me the perspective from which to view the stimulus, whether I'm looking for gaps or not. So for example, in a must be true question or most strongly supported, I'm uh -huh. not concerned with gaps in an argument. And in fact, it may right. simply be a fact set. But in other cases like flaw or strengthen or weaken, the gap right. is incredibly important to focus on. Right, right, right. So you, you, your strategies are like completely different for the type of questions you're reading rather than having one like preset strategy that you're going to apply to every single question. Exactly. I mean, there's over a dozen oh, okay. different types of logical reasoning questions and they all right. require different approaches and different perspectives. Right. I feel like even though I read all these concepts, when it comes to like taking a section or doing a practice test, I feel like when you're like competing against time, it's hard to apply each one of these concepts perfectly to every single one of these questions. Uh, how would you, would that come with practice or would that come with, you know, uh, doing questions untimed, then like getting a feel for it, then moving on, and like timing your sections, then taking practice. How, how would you recommend that? It's all valuable work and it does take time as well. The LSAT's an incredibly difficult exam and right. it requires building the foundation first. And the framework underlying my LSAT study plans is what right. I call the laser approach to LSAT studying, learning, accuracy, sections, exams, right. and review. So learning is the theory, accuracy is questions by type, S is for sections, individual timed 35 minute sections, right. e is for exams and endurance, and R is for review. So each of these things has their place. Questions by type uh -huh. has its place. Reviewing concepts and building the foundation has its place. And Got then it. pulling it all together with full length exams also has its place. And so it's all valuable. And I think a mix of all of this is right. important. And since Definitely. you're taking it in the summer and we're speaking now in February, you've got enough time to slow down and just work on the foundation. If you don't feel like you have a strong foundation, then I wouldn't even worry about full length exams yet. Got it. Okay. Uh, and I have one last, I'm so sorry. I've been asking. Not at all, please. So there's uh, two things that I want to ask you about. So shell type questions, right? So in uh, logical reasoning, so questions that are similar in concept to the stimulus, but they're, they're like innately different, but like an answer choice is based on the other concept. So those kind of questions really trip me up because it's hard to recognize those answers. Uh, those those uh, answer choices from the right answer choices. How is there a trick to going about those type of questions? Yeah, sure. And so when you're referring to like really tempting wrong answers and right. discouraging right answers, this is to circle back to our earlier discussion on Socratic review method. We talked about the stimulus, okay. but there's also the answer choices. And right. tougher questions have really tempting wrong answers and discouraging right answers. So one of the things you want to be looking at as you engage in your review process is uh -huh. what was tempting about the wrong answer choice that made you pick it or consider it and what ultimately right. makes it wrong and what is discouraging about the right answer that pushed you away from it and made it seem unappealing and what ultimately right. makes it correct. So you have these traps of discouragement away from the wrong answer and traps of encouragement towards the right answer. And Got these are it. things you want to articulate for yourself. And looking at explanations 
this is really where it becomes a crutch because it prevents you from engaging in your own analysis here. And so right. you talk this out with a friend, a study buddy, a uh-huh. coach, a tutor, or just writing out in a journal. But right. put it in your own words before you look at other sources. So you want you want so the Socratic learning method uh, would occur bef- Socratic review or uh, that would occur before me reading the uh, explanation given by the textbook or like the workbook. Exactly. At least give it a shot on your own first mm-hmm. and see if you could figure out what led you astray. And if right. you can't figure it out or you've already given it the time to figure it out on your own, then you could uh-huh. look at other sources to see what other people think about the same question. And they may confirm your understanding. They may disconfirm it and add new information or a totally different approach. But it it is ultimately good to get the varying various perspectives, but first think it over for yourself. Got it. That's awesome. Uh, One last question I have is um, for, um, for a question that requires necessary versus sufficient, there's there. When do you want a diagram? Because I've always felt like, there's a, I, I understand it, but diagramming could help me, but diagramming also takes up a lot of time if it's like a very more complex structure um, with multiple sufficient necessary uh, sentences. So what, what would you think is the right time for you to um, diagram a sufficient and necessary diagram? For so logical speaking reasoning logical question. reasoning, yeah. So yeah. in logical reasoning, I would recommend diagramming very few question types. Most right. logical reasoning questions do not lend themselves well to diagramming. And most of them are right. more informal logic in nature, which means you're really mm-hmm. thinking through them in a real world sense. Now, Got conditionality, it. of course, does appear. And when right. conditionality appears to a certain extent, to mm-hmm. a certain level, then it does become worth diagramming. But it's only for certain question types. Specifically, exactly sufficient assumption questions Mm -hmm. must be true questions and parallel reasoning questions. Those are the three biggest areas where, where conditional reasoning comes in. And there's also must be true questions, but this is not all the time. This is only in certain instances. So some must be true questions lend themselves to diagramming. Others Uh don't. Some sufficient assumptions lend themselves to diagramming. Others don't. So you really have to look at the specifics of the question and just how many conditional statements are involved and also to what extent they can be linked together. Got it. Got it. That's awesome. Okay. And uh, question, one last question. I'm so sorry. Sure. Taking no, a lot of all. time. Uh, one last question is regarding reading comprehension, right? Uh, so I've been taking reading comprehension. Sometimes I do great and I get like a minus four and like four, uh, or like sometimes I do really bad to get like a 10 to 11. Uh, I, I definitely think I can apply the Socratic review method to these questions as well. Um, but the one, uh, the, the one thing I wanted to ask was, uh, does reading more complicated uh, like articles on a day-to-day basis help you with uh, approaching the reading comprehension section of the LSAT, like reading like, The Economist or um, the New York Times, Wall Street Journal? Does that really help with um, approach taking the reading comprehension? Yeah, it could certainly help. It definitely wouldn't hurt. I wouldn't consider right. it actual study time though. And right. given that your timeline is maybe something like what, three to four months, then right. you are better off focusing on actual LSAT reading comp passages. I mean, Got there's it. nearly a hundred released exams. So that's nearly right. 400 passages. Right. And so I wouldn't want you reading The Economist at the expense of reading actual LSAT passages. Got it. At the Got same it. time though, I understand the need to do something a little bit lighter occasionally. And obviously- right mainstream journalism is a little bit more engaging than LSAT passages right. are. So right. if you want to take a break from the serious <laughs> stuff, then yeah. yeah, read The Economist for sure. Right. Okay, cool. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for your help. Um, uh, so how would, if I want to uh, apply for a tutoring with you, how would I go about that process? Yeah, sure. We could definitely have another discussion to go more in depth on that as well. I'd love to know more about what your what what your struck what your daily schedule is like? Could you share? Right, right. That? So my daily schedule is basically I have classes from. Um, it's a, usually differs every single day. Thursdays are my heaviest classes, but Wednesdays and Fridays I'm pretty. I have no classes. Uh, usually during I have two online classes, which I usually do on Sundays because it's a very lighter class. It's not um, too much of a, a tasking class. It's like very like uh, it's like elective and GE. 
so my Monday classes are usually around uh, 10 and 10 to one or two, three o'clock. Right. So let's say three o'clock. Right. This, I come, come back to my apartment at three o'clock. So I usually wake up. Um, I have uh, I do my logical reasoning uh, work in the mornings. So I do it for an hour and I go to class, come back, do my homework. Then I, have, uh, I go to work. Um, then uh, I go to the gym, then I come back. Then I um, if I have more time left, I go back to the problems I did earlier and uh, I see what mistakes I made. Uh, I do usually about like an hour each day. I definitely need to be pushing it a little bit more. Um, during exam weeks, it's a little bit lower. When it's not exam weeks, I usually put like three, a couple hours a day. But I just don't have a structure to it, uh, which I feel like is like hurting my process of getting my the score I want. Yeah. Because uh, because when when I don't have a routine, like a proper routine, when it comes to the LSATs, it's always uh, it doesn't like propel me to the goal, goal I want to achieve. Of course. Um, and yeah. I definitely want to get a routine to it. I need to have, like, I feel like I've, I'm almost aimless when I do my problems. I feel like I'm just, it's more of like just repetition at this point, not learning something new. I want to learn, like, I want to be able to have a structure, like do certain things certain days to help me move forward in uh, attaining my score. Yeah. Well, that's definitely something I could help you out with. And so... My recommendation for now is uh -huh. write out your review process as I described in this conversation. Write right. it out for at least three questions uh -huh. in logical reasoning that give right. you trouble. Then okay. email it to me. And then right. once you do, we'll schedule another call to talk about what a coaching program could look like. Perfect, man. Perfect. I'll uh, send it to you by like, tonight or like tomorrow afternoon. Awesome. Great. And then I'll send you a link to book another time where we could have another call discussing the coaching. That'll be, depth. that'll be perfect. Thank you. It was great talking to you. Thank you for all, answering all my questions. My pleasure, Mithrin. Same. But before we sign off, what would you say uh -huh. is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Uh, the biggest insight I got was more of self-reflection. I feel like that's definitely going to be a big part of the LSAT of becoming a better LSAT taker. Um, I didn't think of it that way because I always thought, you know, books are always right. But what, talking to you, I, I, started I, you know looking at your other videos it's more about you being your key source of information rather than depending on someone else awesome well really glad i was able to help uh, please keep in touch and we'll talk soon definitely definitely steve nice talking to you have a great day same you too bye thanks for tuning into the show please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as i release them and feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.